Hello, everybody. My name is the Sobri Boys Walefatsi from TBR Solution, uh, TBR Solution uh, Finance section. Today we are doing what you call consumer rights, and then we have consumer rights activist, uh, Mr. Elias Shamatla. Uh, some of you might hear him on Radio Lesedi FM, uh, Pulpit, and SABC uh, TV. Uh, he's available on those platforms. So he's coming here to share light on debt review. So today we want to speak about fees that are involved as far as debt review is concerned. Mr. Shamata, welcome to the show. May you kindly greet the viewers. Good evening, Dr. and good evening to the viewers. It's always an honor to be here. Um, Dr. Shamata, we have people saying I'm under stress, I'm over indebted. Uh, with the money that I earn now, now they go for debt review. Now people don't understand, if I go for debt review, there is a debt counselor, there are creditors there, and then this person, payment still has to be done to a debt counselor. I know you did explain uh, the last show in terms of two payments, the first one being the debt counselor, the second one being uh, uh, the legal fees. So can you elaborate how these fees are linked, okay? But the question that I ask or I'm asking is, is it fair for people to borrow money from creditors, the next thing expect to be forgiven? And if they are forgiven, what's gonna happen to the economy? Because the creditors have employed people whom they must pay because interest is their profit. Can you just tell us what's happening there? Well, and that, uh, that's a very important question because if we were to be uh, forgiven not to pay the money that we have, that we have borrowed, actually the, the money that we have borrowed is the people's money that invested in the credit providers. So we will be eating other people's money. So it means that those credit providers will be bankrupt because they will run out of funds when they pay back the owners of the money, meaning the investors. That could be you and me. We invested our money in the banks and everywhere else. And then we are told that we are not going to get interest or dividends because people are not paying. When coming to the employees, if the business is not making money, obviously the, 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 the business is going to shed the jobs. People are going to lose their jobs because I took the money, ate it, and not paid back. So we'll be we'll be killing the economy directly. So there will be that snow uh, snowball effect, whereby me as Mr. Shamato or Mr. Chabalala, I had people to take care of. If I'm unemployed, everybody's gonna suffer. Uh, crime is gonna increase. A uh, lot of things, bad things will go on. So it is important that they everybody should pay back what is due. Remember, they they initiated that move of going to borrow money, all right? Yeah. And people cannot hide behind. I oh, know I was called uh, marketing. They had the right. They had the right to say no. So they could not say no. So they must take responsibility, which is part of the big R. Big R talks about all the positive R words. Responsibility is one of them, and we are talking about their rights. Now, can you further clarify the fees as elaborated? I know last week you spoke about first payment, second payment, and how is it going to just elaborate a little bit so that they can understand what's happening about the fees. Thank you, Dr. Uh, the fees are as follows. Firstly, uh, that counselor needs to be paid because that counselor is a professional, somebody uh, who stands between the credit providers and consumers, who ensures that the credit providers get their money, who ensures that the, 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 the consumers pay and they are not abused or harassed. So that's why while you are under that review, you are protected by the law because there's a debt counselor who is taking care of your debts. But the debt counselor does not own those debts. 
all that the counselor does is to negotiate with the great providers and ensure at the same time that you have a peace of, peace of mind. Now you can answer the calls from your family members because at the moment you are putting your phone permanently on silence because you are scared that great providers are going to call you. Now, so now this. Okay, okay, Mr. Shamata. So now this important person called the debt counselor has to be paid. How is he going to be to be paid when you owe the credit providers everybody want their money at the same time? Mm -hmm. So there was an industry meeting, credit industry meeting, to discuss the the fees, and everybody agreed in that industry meeting to say that counselor plays a crucial uh, role in this business because he is helping the credit providers to collect their money for free. Mm. Because if there was no debt counselor, credit providers were going to spend money to hire the debt collectors to collect the money that, that is being owed by the consumers. Mm. But with the introduction of the debt counselor, that counselor is doing that job diligently and great providers are saving money because they are not paying this debt counselor. This debt counselor is paid by the consumer because he is assisting the consumer to save his assets and to protect his name because while you are under debt review, you are not blacklisted. So the question was in that industry meeting, at what stage should the debt counselor be paid? The great providers unanimously agreed that a debt counselor is a preferred creditor, meaning he comes first on the list. Mm -hmm. When you apply for debt review, that counselor gets paid first because this is the person who does the, the, the difficult job. Mm -hmm. Get that counselor out of the way. It's a once-off fee. Mm -hmm. which is equivalent to the first installment of all of your accounts. Mm -hmm. So in other words, you as a consumer, technically, you're not paying the debt counselor. That counselor has been paid by the credit providers. Mm -hmm. Because credit providers are saying, the man that is supposed to come to us must go to the debt counselor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just Let's take care of the counselor. Just there. I want you to clarify the difference between a debt counselor and a debt collector, all right? That's one. Yes. <clears throat> and you say credit providers were spending a lot of money on debt collectors. Yes. And then as you explain the difference between debt counselor and a debt collector, what fees are involved for a debt counselor? What fees are involved for a debt collector? All right, that's second one. You also said, while you are under debt review, I want you to know this, you are not blacklisted. Yes, yes. It might create some confusion because once a person is under debt review, a person can be able to make a new credit. So what is blacklisting? Blacklisting prevents you to get a credit. Debt review, while you're under debt review, you can get a credit. So the consequences are the same. So why you say you are not blacklisted? That's another thing that I want to elaborate. Now, firstly, I said the difference between a debt counselor and a debt collector. What fees are involved for a debt counselor? What fees are involved for a debt collector? And then uh, blacklisting, why we say they are not blacklisting? And then the last one, I hope you know them. The client says, I'm struggling already. Now I must have somebody who's going to be paid. And you said, by the way, this person is paid by the, the, the creditor, not necessarily the, 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 because that's the money it was supposed to go to the creditor. So yeah, just on those four issues, quick, quick, all of them. Then uh, after oh. that, we'll do the last thing, then we are done for the day. The, the first part, a debt collector is somebody who wakes up in the morning 
and goes and registered with, registers with the Council for Debt Collectors in Victoria. That is the institution that regulates the debt collectors. Council for Debt Collectors. Those are the people uh, who knock on our doors, who call us every day to say, we are acting on behalf of so-and-so, we are here to collect the money. Those are debt collectors. They don't undergo any uh, training. There's no training required. There are no, not lots of requirements to register as a debt collector. Actually, you and I can wake up in the morning and go and register as debt collectors tomorrow. However, with debt counselors, these are the people who have undergone the vigorous training and test. Mm -hmm. These are the people who have studied uh, debt counseling and SNCA uh, in general, mm -hmm. which is the National Credit Act. And then after completing a training, which is currently offered by the University of Pretoria, mm -hmm. after they have completed their training, then they go and register with the regulator, NCR. Mm -hmm. And again there, there are lots of checks and balances that are conducted before one gets registered as a, as a, as a, as a debt counselor. Mm -hmm. And then obviously there are fees paid to be registered as a debt counselor and then you have to renew the fees in line with the NCR's guidelines, mm -hmm. right? With debt collectors, they pay a fee as well, but they don't undergo any uh, rigorous uh, training. Mm -hmm. So a debt counselor is fully regulated by the NCR. Mm. And that counselor is monitored by NCR. Mm. That's why time and, time and again, NCR will conduct, will conduct a, 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 a side audit. Side yes. Mm. yes. Mm. yes. Mm. So that's the debt counselor. So now this debt counselor's role mm. in terms of the National Credit Act uh, plays a role of a middleman mm. between the credit provider and the consumer. Mm -hmm. So he ensures that, yes, the credit providers want their money from you, that the Chavalal, and everybody wants a big chunk of the cake. Mm -hmm. And you try to explain yourself, nobody wants to listen. Mm -hmm. That counselor is there to say, hey guys, hang on, here's the cake. Mm -hmm. I am going to cut a slice for everyone. Everyone is going to get his share. Mm. Just relax. Mm. Mm. You know, we explained the issue of the budget uh, mm. last week. Mm. Now mm. he's in control of the budget to say, here is the amount that you guys can share. Mm. Mm. So if there are guidelines there that guide the that counsel us off as to how much he can propose mm. to mm. credit providers. Mm. At the same time, he ensures that the credit providers do not harass this consumer. Mm phone consumer day and night, demanding more money. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, so, and the debt counselor is very important because he does permanent arrangement, it's not temporary. Mm, mm. There won't be a credit provider that comes back after three months and say, hey, we have reviewed uh, this uh, this arrangement, we mm. think it's too little now. Mm. We have seen that by gaining weight. Mm, mm. So it means that you have got more money. Mm, 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 mm. Yes, so his, uh, his arrangements, arrangements are permanent. Okay. And he goes further to court to make sure that there is a court order to protect you as a consumer. Mm -hmm. Because credit provider cannot turn around tomorrow and say, I think this money is too little. Mm -hmm. Then it means that he has to go via the court first and he has to explain himself in court, where were you? Why do you agree to this in the first place? Mm -hmm. Again, this court order uh, protects the credit provider because you said to the credit provider, I can't afford to pay 500 rent. I can only afford to pay 200 rent. Mm. And the credit provider accepted. So you can't come back now and pay 100 rent. Mm, 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 mm. And, and, then, and while you're still there, the credit providers, if they want to collect your house or repossess your car, they use the law, they use the courts. So that is why there has to be court order so, to mitigate. Because sometimes people don't understand that review it's not about reduction of installment per se, although yes. there are a lot of benefits, uh, yes. but largely it's more of a legal protection. 
yes. than any Hello. other thing. And on top of that, in addition, creditors go further and reduce interest rate, as you said last week. So which probably helps them because a, a client says, no, I, I have a little money, I have, have to share with the debt counselor. That is why you are saying, in essence, the people who pay the, 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 the debt counselor are the creditors because they have yeah. reduced their interest. So I wanted to clarify that one quickly. Now, you said when you're under debt review, you are not blacklisted. But I said the consequences of being blacklisted prevent you to get a, a new credit or a, a new loan. And then the consequence of being under that review have a similar uh, outcome. So what is the difference? Because the outcomes are the same, if you can clarify. Okay, thank you, Tati. Uh, with that review, uh, that review is just an indicator on the credit bureau system mm. to say, Jamatla cannot afford to pay what he has now mm. or what he owes now. Mm. So let's put a stop, a block, mm. for him to uh, incur further credit mm. Mm. so that he can pay off what he has mm. or what he owes now. Mm. Mm. And so while, <clears throat> while they are still there, Shamatla, one yes. can also add and say, remember, <clears throat> as you say, it is an indicator. Yes, you go to court, but the owners rest with the credit provider because we have seen it. I'm sure you have seen it yourself. People being under debt review, but credit providers give them a credit, which borders along the lines of reckless lending. But mm -hmm. remember, that will be on the owners of the consumer because credit lending could be on both sides. The consumer and their credit provider. So that's the risk that they are prepared to take. Am I correct in saying that or not? You are correct in that, uh, because while I'm clarifying the issue of uh, that review indicator, mm. it's not a negative listing. Mm. Black listing is negative mm. because it's the default. Mm. It means that uh, you are a bad payer. Mm. Mm. Now, while you're still there, Shamatla, you know why I was coming up with that? I've seen it in my practice here, where a guy was almost done, not yet yet. He came to me and said, I want the car. I said, no, you can't have it because you are under debt review, all right? As an indicator, he said, no. Uh, they said, he went to them before he comes to me. I can have it. I said, that's your choice. If that is the case, you guys, are, they gave him a half a million car while still under that review. So I wanted to show that it happens, but the yeah. owners relies with who? Both parties, the, the consumer and, 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 and the creditor, uh, because they know what are the results of that. They know where it emanates. So at the yes. end of the day, uh, it lies with them. Mr. Shamata, thank you very much. I know that you are very busy, very hectic. And then uh, I just wanted us to come up to that. Then we'll start probably where we ended today and move further so that we clarify and make people understand this process, unless there's anything that we'd like to add as the last input. Yes, in that day, I just wanted to add the issue of the fee so that we, uh, we clarify it thoroughly for the viewers yeah. to say um, th that counseling professional fee is a once-off payment. How is it determined? The first installment, I mean, the, the fee is equivalent to the first installment. And then going forward, you are going to pay what is called aftercare fees, which is 5% of, of what you are, you are paying, and it's not more than 450 rand. And now I the installment, if you can clarify the installment, what is an installment? I was paying 5,000 for my car and I'm still going to pay that 5,000. What is installment no. in terms of- You are going to pay that. Like? Yeah, just explain. Uh, uh, what happens is that 
Um, with regards to, to the car, you are going to pay 80% of your contract. Yeah, now you can go ahead. Yes. Um, Mr. Shamata, I see that you've got a bit of a challenge. Uh, Mr. Shamata was just explaining that you are going to pay what you call 80% of um, the installment that you used to pay. But um, what he says, you pay the installment. The installment is equivalent to the rehab fee. What is a rehab fee? A rehab fee is the money when we are busy with the two budget that he told us about last week. The first budget being your living expense, the money that you need in order for you to survive. And then the budget number two is the budget of uh, uh, the budget of uh, paying your creditors, uh, the outstanding money that needs to be paid. So let's say you're earning 10,000 rent and then you allocate after you deduct all your living expense, they take about 5,500. Then you'll be left with 4,500. The, 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 the creditors will be told that guys, you need to share this cake that he was referring to of 4,500. That is called the rehab fee. So that's the installment that he's talking about, all right? So whether the car, all of them, they need to share. The car, the house, your short-term loans, your, your, your clothing accounts, all of them, they need to share that. And he even said the first installment, which goes to a debt counselor, is that first installment. If Remember when I made the example of 4,500? Is that 4,500? That's the first installment that goes to a debt counselor. There is no way that the debt counselor can get more than that. You'll get only 4,500 as per the rehab fee. All right? And then going forward, he pays the legal fees. Uh, it depends, lawyers charge so much, or they go for a NCT, NCT, which is about a thousand rent fees. Uh, but NCT requires that all creditors agree to the proposal. If they don't agree, then it's a dispute. So they don't want it, it has to go to court. So now it's thousand rent, 500 rent is for NCT to do their work. Another 500 rent is for the debt counselor to do the admin work in order for them to send emails and all that, everything, the communication that I make, the stuff that they pay. So that's how the fees are being uh, divided. But nevertheless, if you still have questions that you'd like to ask, feel free to do that. You'll see at the end of the show, you'll see the WhatsApp number, uh, but not only that, when you go down there, you'll see our website. It will show you what the website. The website is the big r.co.za, which is T-H-E-B-I-G-R.co.za. In other words, it's www.T-H-E-B-I-G-R.co.za. All in small letters. Thank you very much. We'd like to get your questions.